now we'll talk about deep learning object detection and we'll start with uh, more simple examples. So how do we perform object detection using a CNN, for example? The problem is that we can't really do this as a regression because every input image has a set of uh, basically exact number of outputs. So in this case, if we want to output the localization for all objects, it will vary as the number of objects in the image vary. And this can get ver very complex. If we have many, many objects, then we'll have to have some variable way of uh, to output the output. So we can now try to do this as a classification. Basically, we run a sliding window over the image, and at every region, we'll have to decide if there is an object there and which object is it. So, for example, we can see that this window contains a cat, this window contains none, none of the objects, and this one is a dog. So how do we train this? We take the model, the simple model that we saw earlier, and just add one more class uh, for the classification head, which is the background class. The training is pretty simple. We crop random regions from the image and scale them to uniform size and basically train the network with a classification task where the label is defined by the intersection of a union of that window with the ground truth that we have. We simply uh, train this for classification and then we can take the train model and go over the image again, crop the windows, resize them, put into the image and get the output for each re region. Does it contain an object or not? So if we apply this method, we'll get into the first problem, which is that we have so many detections. If we want to scan all the locations in the image, all the sizes, we'll get thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of windows. And we need to basically suppress them somehow. So the way to do that is called non-maximal suppression, or NMS at short. We start with the strongest detection that we have and we basically compare it to all other detections and suppress the detections which have large overlap with that criteria, with that detection. In this case, the criteria is 50%, but of course that we can play with that and see what works better on our data. And we repeat this process with the next detection until we end up with basically this small set of detections. So this method was great to begin with, but it's too slow. Why is it slow? Because we have to crop each region, resize it, and apply a very expensive network. But sliding window is inherent in CNN, so it's a shame not to use that. And this is exactly the work that they did in Overfit by Rob Fergus and Jan Lacun. Basically, if we take a network and give it a certain input, in this case, 14 over 14 for this input, we get one pixel of output, basically a decision for that window. If we apply the same network over a larger image, we get instead of just one, one pixel, we get a map of values. So instead of just getting C classification scores, we'll get a map of classification score where each point in the map is mapped to a different window. So using this property, we can simply take the image, resize it to different sizes, run the network, and get the classification score map. Using the bounding box regression, the localization I had from before, we can get a uh, more fine localization of that object. And using the NMS that we already know, we can get just the one location of that object. So the problem that it's still very slow and the uh, CNNs are still very expensive to apply even if we use a sliding window approach. So the way that we can handle this problem is simply by not run the network at all locations of the image, but basically just look at the subset. So this solution is called RCNN by Ross Gilschik. So we use region proposals, which is classical computer algorithm that finds basically blob regions in the image. We get this algorithm, which is not oriented into a specific class, but can find any object and apply it over the image to get this set of uh, windows. So this is one example of a region proposal algorithm. It's called selective search. It uses a bottom-up approach where we basically segment the image into small regions according to color and many ca characteristics and gradually merge it to get larger and larger regions which allow us to get the proposals for the object detection. 
And there are many choices you can take at this point, and here are a few of them. You can compare the running time, the accuracy, and so on. But currently, if you're using a region proposal, the most common use is edge boxes, which give pretty good trade-off between speed and the accuracy of the proposals. So how does RCNN works? Basically, we get the input image for which we apply the region proposal algorithm, which proposes which regions we should look at the image. Then we warp this image, crop them just like we did before, and apply a classification network that was pre-trained on a classification task to extract the features. Then we apply the classification using another trained SVM and bounding box regression using linear regression. So the training of this method is pretty complex and it takes a few steps. As I said, we start with pre-training the model for a different task for classification on ImageNet, for example. We can then fine tune the feature extractors on Pascal, just replace the classification head from the thousand categories for classification to 20 categories plus background for detection, extract all the regions, and simply again train the classification method. Once we have the feature extraction ready, we can train the final classification. We extract again all the regions from all the images. We extract the features that we pre-trained. And then we learn SVMs, one per class, and one uh, linear regression per class. So as you can see, this process is very long and takes a lot of disk space. For example, 200 gigabytes just to store the features, which is not very useful. But this method, at the time, was very, very accurate. It, it passed in accuracy all the other methods by a large margin. And also, I'd like to remem remind you that from 2017 to 2012, there wasn't a real breakthrough. It was more of a kitchen sink method uh, algorithms where we just threw everything we had, and whatever stuck and improved the accuracy helped. So this caused the accuracy to basically stop improving, as you can see from 2010, 2011, 2012, and so on. So this, with all its problems, has been a pretty big improve in accuracy.